Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. And today's question comes from Dave Engstrom, KI7QL. And he said um, he'd like to know how he can put up an antenna for the lower bands, uh, 80 and 20 are the popular lower bands, he mentions 160 meters. There's not that much activity. And it's real hard to put up an antenna for 160 meters that doesn't do anything except transmit straight up. Now for the 80 meter and the 40 meter, here are some possibilities. I took the liberty of looking up your location on Google Maps and, and indeed, uh, I seen very few trees around there and none that are near you. So you're gonna have to do one of two things. You're going to have to put up a vertical and you have ample room for a vertical. Now, verticals can be multi-band or they can be single band. You can buy multi-band verticals from all the various different providers and you pick the one that is good for uh, the particular uh, bands that you like. Now, uh, the thing about a vertical, you would need to put in a radial field, and you've got plenty of room for that. You, the, the, for those who don't know, uh, Dave, KI7QL, has an extremely large backyard uh, because he happens to live in a, in a uh, particular uh, development that has pretty large lots. So he can put up an antenna and put out a radial field for it. Now, uh, vertical antennas that are multi-band uh, can be a little expensive in the six to $700 range, sometimes a little bit more. And uh, you can also get antennas that don't require a radial field, but since you have room for the radial field, I would recommend an antenna that requires a radial field. Now, my main vertical antenna is the uh, Step IR Big IR. Uh, which uh, came to me as an arrangement from Step IR where I paid a piece, they paid a piece, and so on. So uh, that was a, a semi-sponsored antenna. Now, uh, other antennas uh, that are used in this situation, the uh, Butternut HF9V available exclusively from uh, DX Engineering can go in there, although I will comment that it will be a bear to tune. But there are lots of other verticals uh, that you can look at out there. Now, as far as horizontal antennas, uh, one quickie way to put up a mast is to get two pieces of uh, 10 and a half foot long chain link fence top rail. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. These will need to be guyed. So you want some guy rope that is UV resistant that doesn't stretch. Okay, and you can get these from uh, a variety of uh, places, including DX Engineering. So you put up these two, put a pulley at the top of each, and you can pull up an antenna that will be 20 feet off the ground. With a little bit more work, you can put up an antenna uh, mast, a mast for the antenna that's like 30 feet high. This is actually harder than it looks. Uh, I've put up a couple videos on this, because even if you're six feet tall, that antenna mast will be five times your height. This is why you would want to pre-connect the guy ropes and uh, get several people to help you put this up. Uh, one on each guy rope plus a couple of people on the main antenna plus a safety observer. The safety observer's job is to call 911 if things go pear-shaped. Now, uh, you'll want to put stakes into the ground, go in Home Depot or wherever to the area. These are called concrete form stakes, and you can get them in two foot, three foot, four foot, and so on increments. I would recommend that you get the uh, like a three foot and uh, put these mostly into the ground at an angle like this, and then you can attach your guy rope. If your guy rope tends to slip on it, there are holes in the stake. You can put a nail through and that'll hold the uh, rope in position. 
This gives you two uh, points where you can string an antenna between. I would recommend doing a 40 meter dipole on this. Now, the transmission will be more up than out, but there's still a significant portion. It's only down about three or four dB as you get down close to the horizon. Okay, now dipole antennas are supposed to be somewhat directional. I've never found that to be much of an issue. Uh, MFJ even puts out a rotatable dipole and I don't I don't know why I would ever rotate a dipole, but you can do it. Now, there are other opportunities, things that you can do. Uh, mobile antennas, uh, ham sticks. A ham stick is something you can get from MFJ or a variety of other providers like DX Engineering, Ham Radio Outlet, so on and so forth. And uh, these are designed for mobile use. They're loaded whips. And you can put two of them back to back as a dipole, or you can put one on top of a tripod and then run radio wires out from it. And that will work just fine too. An antenna that I recently tested is here, the Cushcraft HV4E. Uh, this is a 80, I'm sorry, not 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 uh, vertical. And I am surprised how well this thing radiates. And it's not very tall either. It's less than 20 feet tall. So I hope this gives you some ideas. You're going to have to put up some sort of a mast to hold up one end, and you're going to have to guy it so that it can support a horizontal load. You could use the peak of your roof or guy a 10-foot piece of this out to where your antenna is. You could do an end-fed half-wave dipole like the ARRL cells, or you can go to myantennas.com and get the 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10, and it covers some of the intermediate bands too. Uh, or you can get the 75 and so on. You get the 80 if you want to work FT8 on 80, and you get the other one if you want to work sideband on 80. Now, I will warn you that 80 meters is full of nets. It's hard to find a frequency in which you can throw a CQ without getting a reaction from somebody who says the net's going to start in 20 minutes or something like that. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do to get an antenna in the air even though you don't have any trees or anything like that to act as supports. So, Dave, good luck with your uh, system. And I would like to thank all of you for sponsoring this video. Yes, you. You have uh, sent in through PayPal, uh, the tip jar, and Patreon uh, support for this channel. So thank you for providing the support required to keep this channel on the air. Until we next meet, 73.